Okay, so writing down the three equations we got, the equations we got from the three points, each point gives us an equation. I write them down here, I reverse sides on the equal sign, so they just look better this way, more conventional. And then I take these two equations and write them down again, except I change all the signs in the second equation, meaning I multiply the second equation, everything by negative one, right? So it's still equivalent to this equation. Now we add these two. Well, what's 70 added to negative 15? 55, right? What's C added to negative C? There's noise in the hall. A little louder. Zero. Zero. Good, good. Say that with confidence. You're right. Okay. What's 90B added to negative 170B? So we got negative 80B. I don't write anything down for zero. I don't want to write an extra step. We're about out of time. And then I do this, right? Which gives me negative 20,800, I think. Okay? That makes sense? Now, so this is the uh, second equation minus the third, right? Okay. Now I'll do the first equation minus the second. I'm not going to write it out. Okay. But I'm going to have, you know, C minus C, right? It's going to give me zero. 120 minus 70 is going to give me 50. 7B minus 90B is negative 83B. 49A minus 8100A is negative 8051A. Okay, so now I've got two equations, right? Okay. Now I want to find a solution for A and B. Well, what I do at this stage, that eh, gets a little tricky in the arithmetic, okay? So I'm not actually, I'm, I'm going to let you do something that makes the arithmetic a little simpler for your exercise, okay? And you'll see in, in the assignment. Um, If I was to multiply this equation by negative 83, then I'd have 83 times 80B, right? And if I multiply this equation by 80, I'd have negative 80 times 83, right? And my Bs would go away, wouldn't they? When I add them? Now I'd have a big old number here and a big old number here and some pretty big numbers here, right? But I could add big numbers. And you can use a calculator on this. I don't expect you to do this in your head. Especially since you're going to be estimating numbers. Instead of squaring 170, which everybody should be able to do in their head. Everybody knows the square of 170, right? You know the square is up to 1,000, don't you? No. Okay. Nobody. Ah, I won't say nobody does. Um, you might have be having to square 173, okay? Well, I can square 170 easy because I know what 17 times 17 is, but I can't square 173 very easily. Give me a minute. I can do it in my head and I'd probably be wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, kind of like shooting foul shots, you know, maybe I can shoot a little over 50% on a good day. Uh, not anymore. Um, so anyhow, the whole thing is I've got three equations here that by doing this sort of thing, I can solve for A, B, and C, right? And I'll make it a little easier to solve, and I'll give you some hints and reference a couple examples. But then I can plug in, now I've got my y of t function equals a t squared plus b, t, plus c. Once I know what a, b, and c are, I've got my function, right? And that's a big deal. Which is why we spent all day on this. Okay?